Welcome to the Saturday, July 6th, early slate episode of Brave Birds DFS. I'm your host, Walter, and this is one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. All right, so we have an eight-game early slate. We got some very interesting head-to-head matchups. You're going to have to make some decisions today as to whether you trust the pitcher or the recent form of the teams that are going against them. With that being said, let's pull up my checklist, and we're going to look at the six things we look at every day. We're going to discuss how the previous day went. We're going to look at rainout concerns, top stacks, top pitchers, top hitters, and I'm going to create a DK stack bill for you. So the bag in the overdraft, it was a good day for Bray Burst DFS. The Twins uh, scored 12 runs. I also recommended Miranda went out there and got 31 fantasy points. And I, I told you that Gossman is someone who could beat up on teams that are struggling. And he went out there and got 24.7 fantasy points. But I got a secret to tell you, you can't tell nobody. Everything did not go as planned. The Royals went out there, had a beautiful, just perfect situation in every aspect and only scored two runs. The Blue Jays also only scored one run. And Glass now only got you 14.5 fantasy points. And you might be saying, Walter, that is not bad. But let me tell you, when your salary is 10,800, 14.5 fantasy points mean your lineup is cooked, it's game over, and you can turn on something else. Man, I love this graphic. I had I haven't been able to use this graphic in a very, very long time. I have no rain out concerns. There might be some scattered showers here or there for some of the games, but I have no rain out concerns. All right, my top stacks. I haven't had a top stack page with the Pirates and Tigers, number one and number two, but the Pirates have been playing really well lately, and we'll discuss that stack. I have the Tigers, then the Cardinals, the Rays, and Rangers. So like I said in my opening, there's some interesting matchups, so you're going to have to decide, do I believe in the pitcher (laughs) or do I believe in the teams that are batting, like the Rays and Rangers? I actually like both of the pitchers uh, for – I like the Rays pitcher and also like the Rangers pitcher. But I also like both teams, both teams. And this is a small slate. So this is what you run into. The smaller the slate that you have, the more you have these kind of, uh, what do I choose, the pitching side of it or the hitting side of it. So, But we'll definitely walk through a pirate stack. But these are all five teams that I really like from a stack perspective. So pitchers, I mean, crochet, I mean, just, I mean. What a matchup. Obviously, you know, this makes me nervous. It's kind of like, you know, you're you're playing putt-putt or real golf or whatever, and you're two feet away, and you're like, I, I just can't, I can't miss this. I can't. And you, and you pull it left. Crochet um, is playing the Marlins, and the Marlins are good for what ails you from a DFS perspective. Crochet, I think, I mean, why, why, why am I guessing? I, I have the stats right here in front of me. Crochet in the last five games has uh, had 30. 0.8 fantasy points, 21.2, 17.5, 37.4, and 31.9 fantasy points. And he has 141 strikeouts on the year. So he's hard to fade in a matchup like this, which is different from Glass now. Because yesterday with Glass now, I was like, I'm making him my number three pitcher, but I warned everyone that he was going up against the Brewers who have been playing well. So I could see people fading him, but it's hard to fade Crochet with the matchup today. And then you have Lynn. Lynn is playing Washington, and Washington has not played as well lately. Uh, Lynn, in his past five games, has had 27.7 fantasy points, 24.6. And then he had that dud game against Miami, and before that, some issues against the Pirates and Colorado. And then, once again, I like both pitchers on both sides of the matchup. I'm going with Henny to save for salary saving uh, reasons. Um, Henny for the Rangers, we can pull up his stats and we can see that he's playing Tampa. Tampa Bay. Uh, he had 32.2 fantasy points his last time out, so he can definitely get you with the strikeouts as will he have the control and not have too many walks or just pointless singles. So he had 21.9 points against the Mets and 13.2 points against San Francisco. So will that be the Henny? Once again, his matchup isn't the best. Will it be the Henny that comes out there that can be consistent and get those strikeouts, or will it be the inconsistent side? And I don't have him on the screen, but for Tampa Bay on the other side of this, I like Taj Bradley. 
He had 35.5 fantasy points his last time out. A few games ago, he had 38.8 points against Chicago. So, like I said, you're going to have to decide, do you believe in the pitching or do you believe in the hitting? So, top hitters, once again, we're going to do a pirate stack. And uh, we have Rowdy Tellis, top five name in baseball. And he looks like his name, which is great. 3,200 with the salary savings at first base. You have Brian Reynolds, who's been a stud for a while, 5,200 in the outfield. And you have Langford, who's been playing well recently, 3,900. So, um, you don't have a lot of mega expensive studs today, so you should have a lot of flexibility with your lineups. All right, let's look at this pirate stack. And Tellus has been insane <laughs> of late. Um, two home runs yesterday and four home runs in the last five games, including two multi-hit games. So definitely someone you got to consider. You have Cruz, who we know has just uh, been a stud since he's come up. Uh, 12 home runs on the year, multiple hit games in three out of the last five games. With the home run, you have Brian Reynolds, 16 home runs on the year, uh, multiple hits in two out of the last five games, including three home runs in a multiple home run game yesterday. And then you have Sawinski out there. Haven't had the best year, but it's been OK lately with two home runs in his last five games. And this next one, Gonzalez. So Gonzalez is has not played well but first of all when the team is playing well sometimes things work out for you and it just reminds me of this old Braves and Pirates player Raphael Belliard. Raphael Belliard didn't hit a home run for 10 years and then he went you can look at him online it's great because everybody is shocked that it had actually have happened and when Raphael Belliard hit that home run everybody went insane and that's kind of how it is in DFS with some of these players that you're running at your lineup with it don't make no sense if DFS it was if DFS were around back in 1997 or whenever he hit that home run nobody would have had Raphael Belliard in their lineup except somebody crazy and they would have put Raphael Billiard in their lineup and they would have won that guap. All right. So let me know your comments. Have a great day and go out there and win that guap.